Uh, don't bother watching the rewind this year for the YouTube. It's terrible. <laughs> Actually, um, even though a lot of people just say it's terrible just because they don't like rewind in general until they like watch it two or three times and uh, until they liked it. No, no, it's just terrible in general. It's this year. It's, it's just it's, terrible. This this year the, it's well. The thing is with Rewind, you, it's always going to be cheesy because this is basically a celebration of what, you, what YouTube's done this year. But the thing is, YouTube had a terrible year. Yeah, it did. It would do Adpocalypse and... One, two, and three. Yeah. <laughs> as well as needing the channels to become family friendly. <laughs> and um, actually, now that, now that I think about it, the fortunes of PewDiePie is very much tied to the fortunes of YouTube. I'm yeah. not too sure whether one causes the other, but if one's having a bad time, the other one's always having a bad time too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, so this year's Rewind isn't that nice because YouTube just isn't having good, just didn't have a good year. Yeah. But, you know, it's, I mean, it's also, I also found the Rewind to be a little bit lazier. Yeah, yeah, because probably because of the whole Apple ad, ad Opelix thing. Yeah. They, they probably didn't have, didn't have enough money. Yeah, yeah, this year's Rewind is definitely... I mean, I have to admit, all the other Rewinds are pretty cool, even though lots of people say that, oh, no, they're not. <laughs> yes. Um, my favourite one was the one from 2013. Yeah. Yeah. 2012 was pretty damn snazzy. Snazzy. But 2013, I believe, was pretty damn good, followed up by the one in 2016. Yeah. Yeah, so. Hopefully 2018 will be a whole lot better. Hopefully. But... Cautiously optimistic? Cautiously optimistic. I mean, I have to be. Otherwise, what's the point of living? <laughs> yes. Anyway, welcome back to the... As Yet Undecided Podcast with your anti amcopolis hosts, Mike and Sophie. You know, what would have been really cool in the um, at, in the Rewind this year was that if they managed to get a whole lot of YouTubers that um, were really severely affected by the ad adpocalypse, <coughs> invite, invited them them and, and basically through yellow yellow coins at them with the you know with the dollar signs and have the youtubers basically cr so like you know the youtubers are basically in the white room basically are wondering what they're doing there and suddenly they're all pelted by those yellow coins and they'll just pick up one of those and they'll just be wondering what's going on pick up one of those coins and just start crying yeah i mean i know rewind is supposed to be a celebration of what's happened with youtube but a, a little bit of self a little bit of self-deprecation can go a long way after a bad year yeah you know? I mean, you should be able to make fun of yourself. Yes. Right? Well, we, well, that's exactly what Rebecca Black did after her whole Friday video. Yes. And after she's been known as the Friday girl, uh, she decided to roll along with it and decided to do it. She's decided to roll along with it and, and do a million parodies of herself. Yeah. Yeah, so she kept on getting parodied um, in different shows and things. And she, oh, she's, a, she's been a good sport about it yeah. even as to appear as herself as the friday girl yeah so <laughs> which i think was in, which i think was interesting um actually i was think. well why don't we talk about self-deprecation then um that, <clears throat> that was a bit of a okay yeah so what do you think were the most successful uses of self-deprecation up to the point that the fandom probably did forgive the creator for screwing up hmm um, or at least make the fandom laugh, it, like just saying okay, it, or make them realize that you know, yeah, the creators know that they're bad, and they're self-aware of it, and it's just really, really funny. Self-deprecation done right. Now, because you know, it can go cheesy as well, you know. Now, because because like, I I watched the video last week. Yes. And it was and it was because of the whole source fed thing ending in March. Yes. Um. What, so what the original hosts are doing? Yes. They are creating their own meta show. Yeah. About how it was in SourceFed. Yeah. But creating their own separate thing. Yes. So that they openly mock the process. <laughs> oh yeah. Because you know they they were affected. Oh yeah. Um, I will say recently with the HQ trivia debacle. Where's, where's that? Um, well, if you don't know... Yeah. HQ is a new app mm. where it, it is like a quiz game. Oh. But it's done twice a day. 
um, PST, I think it's 12 and 6. Oh, yeah. Uh, where you go online and if you answered 12 or 12 questions correctly, you win prizes. Oh. So what they, what a magazine did was they interviewed the the host of the show. Ah, oh, yes. The quiz master. The quiz master. Um, and the person who owned HQ mm. got wind of this. Yes. And basically hounded the 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 people that wanted to do the story. Yeah. Because what they didn't know was that the host of the show was renegotiating his contract. Oh. Because like because if they were going to do an interview, he could use that as um what is it called? What's the word again? Leverage. Leverage to get a higher price. Yeah. So what the what the magazine actually did was post the interview between themselves and the owner. Yeah? Yeah. And completely scathed them. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But so. that wasn't self-deprecation. Yeah, I, 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 I know, but... That's yeah. what self-deprecation can save you from. Yes. So, yeah. Um, okay, here's an interesting... Well, Ubisoft are very famous for self-deprecating themselves recently. Yes. And I have to tell you, um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, they're going to offer that for free very yes, soon from 12 o'clock. From, no, no, not from 12 o'clock, from tomorrow. It's tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, but, you know, uh, when this podcast is released... It will, it will be on. Like, as soon as you hear this podcast, get that game! Yeah. Well, no, maybe by the time you hear this podcast, it will actually be gone by then. Sorry, yeah. so, we're very sorry about Sophie's that. Sophie's correction within the podcast. Sophie's correction within the podcast. By the time you listen to this, it would be gone. But, um, I'm going to get... But, um, Black... Ubisoft Black Flag is that... Ubisoft's, um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag is very famous for... Basically mocking the whole game design process. Yes. Because, um, as it turns out, within the games universe, they also have, have Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. <laughs> and um, instead of Ubisoft, they have a company called Abstergo, who are owned by the Templars. And the Templars, who are the um, antagonists of the game, and basically they want to control the whole damn world for um, the world's... for the good of the world. I mean, here's an interesting thing about Assassin's Creed. There's actually no such thing as bad people in there. Um, there's, no, there's not a lot of bad people in there. There's all just black and grey morality. Anyway, um, Abstergo, so anyway, they have a game company called Abstergo and they're trying to create um, the Assassin's Creed games out of the memories of past assassins. <coughs> AKA actually making Assassin's Creed games within Assassin's Creed. It's just meta. Beyond meta. Anyway, um, it's <laughs> terrible. The results. <laughs> they get they they keep they got the they got the writing horrend they got the writing character they got the writing and characterizations within the in game to be absolutely her, absolutely cheesy. They got facts wrong. They got glitches. They got accents wrong. <laughs> I mean, they're honestly just mocking the whole game process. I think I'm going to enjoy Black Flag. Apparently, it's actually like on par with Assassin's Creed Two, as opposed to, as on how good it is. Like, there's apparently like two really good Assassin's Creed games: um, the, the second one and the fourth, and the fourth one. Black yeah. Flag, yeah. And apparently, um, or oranges, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Origin, uh, oranges, and uh, the origins. Yes. Apparently, Origins is one of the better ones, just not as good as those two. Apparently, but yeah. Yeah. But, oh well, I mean. It's, you can't, you can't, you have to have the best, you have to have the best games at something, you know. And another one of their, another one of their famous um, self-deprecation is, um, well, as it turns out, you be, Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs share the same universe. Yes. And in, Assass in, um, in Watch Dogs 2, you can go into a circle office and, again, they mock the game process. Except, it's not really about making the game, but rather how the game is released. Because everything just keeps on getting leaked. <laughs> they, um, um, well, you know, Watch Dogs Two is a hacking game, and within the and within Watch and then with that within that game, in one of the missions, you can get to hack the Ubi, you can ha get to hack the Ubisoft office, offices, which are owned by Abstergo, and then you can then leak the games. 
which is probably like a meta, which is probably again a meta thing on how on the fact that their game ideas kept he just keeps on getting leaked early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So recently, Ubisoft have been making fun of themselves. Can't what? Yeah. And even this latest show, fan case showcase videos. You know how they can't change the logo recently. Yes, that's right. Some of the fans decide to make fun of the logo, and some and the Ubisoft decide to go on board with it, just showing it off and say, "Hey, this is the Poopy Soft." <laughs> because someone, okay, so basically someone three D printed the Ubisoft logo, saying that it looks like a turd, <laughs> and so they actually make the Ubisoft logo, a three D Ubisoft logo, and then Ubisoft basically showed them off afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. The nickname is the Poopy Soft. <laughs> 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 oh well, they know they're ridiculous. Why, why would retailers celebrate Christmas so early? I mean, I mean they began in mid-November! Or well, even earlier than that, <laughs> to be frank. First of November! <laughs> it's almost as if, like, oh, Halloween's over. Washes off face paint, um, puts away all the skeletons, gets out the tinsel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much how it goes. It's like, uh, you know, I like Christmas. It's just I don't like a, a, a Christmas that's too, just celebrated over too much. It just loses the sparkle and the special. Yes. That's about it. And, and even to some extent how some people have birthday months. Yeah, why? Yeah, why? I don't get it either. No. And no one really that special. Yeah, no one's that special. I mean, the Queen, she's like super special, but she only ever gets two birthdays. Yeah, um, I watched a video last night about what would happen, what happens when the Queen dies. Yeah, what happens? Well, um... King Charles... No, 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 you know, as soon as it's known. Yeah. They let the Prime Minister know. Yeah. They let the Foreign Office know. Yeah. Then they alert all of the 52 countries in the Commonwealth. Yep. Yeah. Then they tell the news. Yeah. They have, uh, they have this bright light. Yeah. They this bright blue light to say something's happened. Yeah. They will change, you know, all the comedy... Stuff on all of the broadcast networks yeah. will not happen for the 12 day period. No comedy. No comedy. Yeah. Um, they have already um, pre recorded yeah. all of the stuff that it will be done throughout the, the, the broadcast for the 12 days. So, like what? Um, like stuff related to the Queen and so that's memorial all. things. Yeah. Flag will be on half mast. Um, and the code is London Bridge is down. She's London Bridge. Yeah, the, 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 that is the code name that the Queen has gone. Wow. Yeah. Why? Why do they need a code? The code name. Well, they did the same thing for George. Oh, I see. Yeah. So yeah, and, and it'll cost because not only do you have to do that in the funeral arrangements, it'll cost ten million dollars. It'll be classified as a national holiday. Yeah. You would have to change all of the currencies. Wait. So. Uh, national holiday just for England? Yeah, just for just for UK. Just for the UK, yes. Yeah, and you would have to change all of the currencies because of the Queen yeah. would be changed. So the current cost worldwide to the Queen's death would be $8 billion. She lived for such a long time. Yeah. The longer she lives, the more costly it will just, it'll just be. Yeah. But honestly though, the Queen's such a cool dude. Cool lady. Cool lady. She's a cool lady. I hope she lives to 100 so she can send her, her, herself her own telegram. <laughs> That'll be just be fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, she's... She's... She's one of those people that... You just want to be queen, you know? Yeah. I mean, she's done a fantastic job over the years. I mean, she she made... The only major gaffe she did was over... Princess Diana's death, but that's about it. Yeah. And it's like, if that's your only mistake in your ninety, in your what, sixty, what, sixty years of ruling? If that's, Six, sixty-five at the moment. If that's your only mistake in your sixty-five years of ruling, I have to say you did a damn good job. Yeah. I mean, wow. When does the flag on half half mast? Now, well, that's the, that's the question. Yeah. That's a good debate because the country's flag yeah. goes at half mast, but the royal flag doesn't. No. Okay. Yeah. So, ha um, what will happen to the corgis? <coughs> they the, the, they will just go down to the next person. Oh well, I've I've heard. Well, who who the succeeder is? Oh well, 
to be fair, the, to be fair, the, the coolies are the coolies are well well beloved by the family. So I think um, they think I think they'll just split up the coolie family to whoever wants them, which yeah. is basically everyone. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think the coolies will stay. The coolies will definitely stay. Yeah, it's just that it'll just be a little bit different without the queen, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, everyone loves coolies. Also, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Why did you get corgi? Yeah, it's like corgis and pugs. <laughs> yeah, poor corgis and pugs. They're, they're, they're the basically the mainstay dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So um, then, when will King Charles? When will Prince Charles be King Charles? Well, you know, after the procession. Oh, well, you know, you'd have to go through the wall first to see if Charles will succeed. Yeah. Which is very likely, since he's already the Prince of Wales. Yeah. But but you know there is you know. yeah like a ceremony to make sure. Yeah. Then, um... It'll be after the 12-day mourning period. Yeah. And then there'll be another national holiday. Yeah. But the thing is... Okay. I think King Charles's coronate... Okay. I think King Charles's coronation will not be the first to be televised in colour television, but probably the first one in drones. They're probably the, they're probably the first coronation to use drones probably. as well. Probably. And it's probably the first one to use VR. I bet there'll be, like, VR in that one. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see how BBC wants to tackle it. Yeah. I mean, have you seen what they've done with Planet Earth 2? No, well, I haven't. Hopefully soon. Yeah. No, I did, no, I did not end up uploading the Planet Earth 2 on there first. Sorry. I asked you. You didn't say. It's okay. Oh, yeah. But there's, it is free on um, TVNZ. Okay. Just go on TVNZ on demand. They have it, but it's just not high quality. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for telling me. You're welcome. So, um, judging by what they can do with Planet Earth 2, I bet it's going to look spectacular. Yeah. But, you know. Do you think King, do you think Prince Charles will be a good king? Um, I don't know. I no, don't know. I don't know either. Hmm. We'll see what happens. His one will be a much shorter reign, that's for sure. Yeah. People just don't live that long. Yeah. In fact, there's that probably calls to actually make Prince William, his son, the next king. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's what I was meaning. Yeah, yeah, well, I see what you mean now. Yeah. Traditionally, it's the Prince of Wales that succeeds, but Prince Charles is a little bit on the older side now. He's in his late 50s. Yeah. Yeah. So, maybe, yeah, Prince William, younger, more popular. Yeah. So that means that has longer reign. Yeah. Probably can make a bigger difference. Because you don't want monarchs to die suddenly after the coronation because so much effort's been made for the current season of Dali Dada. But like eight you have to spend your eight billion dollars well. You know? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. One more So a toast for the Queen. <laughs> to the Queen To the To the Queen Beyonce. So when will America be um, notified? Well, the, they'll probably be notified when the Foreign Office as well. Oh, I see. But, that, but, you know, the Commonwealth countries have preference first. Because they're the Commonwealth countries, because they should know that the Queen is dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, 60 years are probably the fastest changes in human history. Well, yeah. Yeah, especially on a health perspective as well. Yeah. Health, science, technology. The Queen has seen some. Yeah. The Queen has seen some. Some things. Some things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, she lived through World War Two. She's gone through the Cold War. She's seen the birth of the internet. Yeah. Social media. Color television. Yeah. She probably has the iPhone 8. Well, she's a techie. Yeah. No, 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 I think she'll have like the iPhone 7, actually. Okay. She's more likely to have the iPhone 7 than the iPhone 8. But, um, you know, she's a, tech she's a techophile, actually. So she's actually very proficient in technology. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, she actually has... Uh, the, the, when I think of the Queen, I also think of David Attenborough because his broadcasting career began round about began round about the same time she was coronated. Yeah. So, 
whenever so both of them are very very well lived and well loved British figures yes yeah so all hail um talking about the Queen Bee Tico files I know this is a bit of an off topic but how would you tell the difference between the Google searches of a crime novelist and a actual murderer <coughs> I, well, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> How long does it take all bodies to decompose? Where could, where could you stab someone so they would die instantly? What poisons and antidotes should I use? <laughs> Man. Or... Do you think a lot of unsolved murderers are murders are because it's, an, it's a crime author that has murdered them, and it's because they know all about the crime and how to murder someone without leaving any traces? Do you think they they haven't just been caught? They just like they can't be caught. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe in the previous generation, and I think with this generation, perhaps. I see. But honestly, though, how would you tell the difference between a murderer, this Google searches of a murderer, and a, and a crime novelist? I wouldn't. You can't? No, I wouldn't. I, I, I probably couldn't tell. <laughs> Could you tell? On a Google search? On a Google on the Google searches? Well, let's see what the keywords... What do you think the keywords would, would be? Murder? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Because murder is too broad. It just gives me the definition of murder. It's basically how to murder. How to murder. Yeah. So things like um, how to wash blood. How to dispose of a body. Where's the best... How to make it look like suicide. Best acid. Yes. Previous murder... Previous successful murderers. Previous successful serial killers. How were the serial killers caught? What Columbine by shooting. What kind of cereal was best with milk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... So it's like, how do you think a crime novelist can do what their research without looking suspicious? Yes. How would you how would you do that? I don't know. I haven't even thought about murder. Have you thought about murdering people? I'm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for 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 the visual artist, uh, I think Sophie tried to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> or could have, uh, was it what's the word? Assassinate you. Yeah, try to assassinate me. That's, that's the traditional assassin's well, yeah, yeah. Well, with two fingers. Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, that's another thing though. Um, you definitely know it was a joke, right? You know why? Why? Too much neck fat. Too much neck fat. Yeah. That's not how it kill you. Yeah. So. What I might do is basically maybe poison your eye drops so that you, you'll be super really blinded. Then I'll just throw you down the stairs. Yay! Break your neck. Yay! So make it look like an accident because it, I can make it look as if you trapped. Yay! Yeah. Best best thing to do ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poison the eye drops, cut the elevator. Yeah. And push me down the stairs. Yeah. Pretty novel way to do it. Yep. Pretty, um... Or maybe we push it in front of traffic. Pretty trilogy of books way to do it. Yep. <laughs> pretty Lord of the Rings way to do it. So how would you kill me? Well, I couldn't. Because you're, you're that precious. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because no matter what, I would get caught. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. It's very easy. Funny thing is, your neck fat probably probably, probably protects you a lot. You probably yeah. don't know it. It's okay. Yeah. I'll deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are you thinking about growing a full beard? No. Aww. <laughs> no, it, people tell me to grow the beard, and I'm like, you don't know how it's like with a person with eczema growing a beard. It well, just doesn't uh, work. Well, are you going to have like the five o'clock shadow, like a traditional um, noir detective? It's pretty much the way that, you know, that's the point where I I decide to cut it off. You need a fedora as well. And a long coat. Yeah. And, a, and you need to start smoking, go on to long-winded monologues, 
get caught up with scandalous women. No, well, if I don't, if I need the long-winded monologues, all I have to do is just contact you. How would you contact me though? Could be, but every time you let you talk, you're very long-winded, and it seems like very monologue-ish. Yeah, I make for, don't I make for good noir detective? Yeah. Oh. Cap, cap and point. No. That's a great detective. A Sherlock Holmes is, is a great detective. He's not a noir detective. Because he's better than him. He's smarter than him. Yeah, exactly. He uses his brains, not his brawn. He doesn't use luck. UK noir. <laughs> <laughs> UK noir, wow. That sounds like Peaky Blinders. Yeah, the old Peaky Blinders. No, not Peaky Blinders, Peaky Binders. Mm. And that sounds, you know, those London gangsters. They can easily do like a noir thingy. Yep. Yeah. I think, wasn't that the game called The Getaway? That was quite old. Oh, I'll switch it up later. That's quite old. Oh, and uh, I just remember something. Why must people be so hardcore when... With the characters, like how come that? How come so many male characters so manly and hardcore to the point of ridiculousness? I can't take them seriously anymore. I don't know. It's like they have to smoke twenty cigarettes and have nails with their jam and <coughs> and have like a, and have bullets for breakfast. It's just why have bullets for breakfast? The only type of bullets that I would have for breakfast are licorice. Yeah, or chocolate bullets. Yeah, yeah, but it's usually chocolate. Oh, yeah, or chocolate, plain chocolate bullets. Plain chocolate bullets, yeah. Yeah, but the ones, the bullets I was talking about was the chocolate bullets with the licorice in the middle. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, but honestly, though, why do you think that so that the, the video game protagonists have to be so hardcore? I don't know. And so manly, and so poisonously masculine. Why? <laughs> So what we'll do is that, by, no. all, by all means, answer the uh, questions no. in the comments below. Actually, you should, we should try some other thing. Should we try, like, should we try like, one of those screams that they do in Dragon Ball Z to bring up the wall of light? No. <laughs> Why not? No, I actually want the audience to still have their eardrums. <laughs> no, we can do it quite like, we can do it quite like, like yeah. <laughs> Thirteen hours later. I think Sophie needs to take her medication today. I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. Well, 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 what the audience doesn't know is that Sophie just flipped me the bird. Yeah. But it's okay. But in saying that, uh, no, I did that to him so that this could still be family friendly. Yes. Because when this, when because you know. It's, we don't need to censor it still. Yes. Thank goodness. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but by all means, uh, what what do you think about intense video game protagonists in the comments below? You can contact us on our own personal platforms at the Manus and Sophie9709. Email, or, email us on asy underside podcast at gmail.com or AYU podcast on Twitter, Tumblr and Facebook. And by the time um, the next episode comes out, it'll be 2018. <laughs> Have a happy new year, people! <laughs> <laughs>